Welcome back to Black News Tonight. 50 years ago, the people incarcerated in Attica, the infamous maximum security prison in New York, said enough is enough, and they staged an uprising. And now, the 1971 rebellion is retold in an upcoming documentary. Take a look. It was 70% black and brown. Prisoners, all white guards. What could go wrong? Grab the guards, grab the keys. All hell broke loose. Told through the eyes of the remaining witnesses, Attica takes us through those five momentous days that ended with the deadliest state-sponsored massacre in the history of the United States. 43 people lost their lives. Owen Glaberman, the chief film critic at The Variety, writes, the movie pulls us into the heart of an American revolt that turned into an American calamity. Joining me now is the director, Stanley Nelson, the co-director and producer, Tracy Curry, and James Asbury, who lived through the Attica uprising and is also featured prominently in the documentary. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, Stanley, I'm going to start with you. Uh, 50 years later, why does this story need to be told? Well, I think it, it's a story that hasn't been told, and it's a story that that um, is so important to you know our people and our country. Um, in many ways, it was the end of the 1960s. You know, um, there, there was a whole change in in, in mood. The uh, phrase "law and order" started to be used. Um, I think there's there's so many different lessons that that we learned from the story of Attica. Absolutely, Tracy, you conducted most of the interviews. I want to ask you about this idea of, of being seen. As soon as they took the guards hostage, the incarcerated people called for media presence. They wanted their circumstances to be seen, to be observed by the outside world. That, that to me was such a powerful statement. Yeah, I mean, I think fortunately, um, the prisoners had the temerity to demand that the media be allowed into the prison um, there had been previous uprisings um, where there wasn't media allowed and the uh, prison administration sort of reneged on some of their promises in terms of amnesty. Um, and so the prisoners understood in some ways that um, there needed to be some sort of public record of what happened there at Attica. Um, and I think um, th there's a way in which we're, we, the public, are allowed to sort of um, to be indifferent um, to what happens in the prisons because we don't see what happens in the prisons. Um, and what the prisoners did was really force the recognition of um, the conditions, the violence that they were subject to by the state, um, and the fact that they continue to remain human beings despite the fact that they were incarcerated. And all of that is because the cameras were in there to, to record their experiences and their, um, their stories and their own voices. Tracy, let me ask you something else, because you, you, you talked about the cameras being present, and now we're at a moment in history where people are using smartphones to record police brutality, uh, particularly over the last five to ten years. Do you see a connection between the political strategy and tactics of those incarcerated in Attica and what we're seeing today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that when people are sent to prison, they are disappeared from their communities in the case of um, many of the Attica prisoners, that's places like Harlem and Brooklyn and Rochester and Buffalo, um, and to places like Attica, which are by design in these remote places with these high walls where we, the public, are not allowed to know um, what goes on. And I think um, what the Attica prisoners did and what those that have recorded so many of these incidences of violence that we see today, um, it forces the public to see and to recognize um, and does not allow us to continue to have that indifference. Um, and in so doing, it forces us to kind of grapple with um, what we allow the state to do in our name and in the name of, as, as uh, the governor and the president of uh, Attica, the time of Attica said, um, in the name of law and order. Um, and when we're forced to do that, we have to kind of ask the tough questions if this is what we're willing to, willing to allow. And I think the film really invites us to kind of reconsider that today. Yes. Absolutely. James, the film critic that I, I quoted on top of our segment called Attica a hellhole. Talk to me about the conditions of Attica. Um, I think I would be... I think that I'd, I'd, I'd be of disservice to people that, that were there by... Um, it wasn't hard it was because every day was um, a lesson in just how much and how brutal 
it has sensitive uh, all the folks were from the executive staff down to the prison guards. Um, they just totally ruled the prison by fear, force, and um, adding more time to your sentence, which nine times out of 10 was pretty much uh, manufactured by the courts. Predominantly, um, black and brown sort of got more more harsher sentences than our white counterparts, basically on the same charges. Uh, an, another racial disparity that we see is that most of the incarcerated people, James, were uh, were black, and the guards were all local white people. Um, right. That's a very interesting dynamic in terms of how things played out. Can you talk a little bit about what that meant in terms of how your day-to-day -day treatment was? Well, they got the opportunity to treat us any kind of way they wanted to. Mostly, mostly it was inhumane. Um, If you wrote a complaint, the complaint never went anywhere. It might it might have gotten to the war, to the warden who told the captains to take care of it, and their way of taking care of it was sitting you up to take you to the box. Where around the clock, um, the retaliation went on. Most of the gentlemen that resided in Attica at some point became broke and you know, where they had no spirit. And I, I think that I used to read a lot of times where a lot of African-American and brown males felt that they were um, pretty much just, they were so dehumanized until they just felt like they didn't have any rights as a human being, period. So I can definitely relate to the, to the concept of slavery physically mentally and spiritually because you had limitations on what you can do, what you can say, and what you can withstand in terms of the physical consequences. Mm. Stanley, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about how you got a hold uh, of footage? I mean, getting access to footage is always challenging. You're an archival <laughs> genius, so if anybody can do it, it's you. But how much film are we talking about, and what was it like putting that stuff together? Well, the, the film footage of Attica is just incredible. I mean, it's it's hard for me to even describe. I mean, that's one of the the things that that makes the story uh, so poignant and, and and so visceral, because you you see you see everything. And and as Tracy said, one of the things that happened was that you know the inmates um, when they took over the prison, they invited the press in. So there's footage of, of, of everything. Um, one of the things that's fortunate is that Tracy and I have done a number of historical films. So, you know, we start looking for footage the, the, the day the production uh, uh, begins. And for, you know, a year and a half, every day we had an archival producer who looked for footage and, and just, you know, every every place every rock that we could turn over we tried to turn over to find find footage and, and we went in knowing that there was some footage but we had no idea that there was the amount of footage that that exists you know um new york state was shooting when the <clears throat> when the law enforcement came back into the prison to take it over and so you see you know the, them firing the guns you see them the aftermath of them torturing people, making them crawl through mud and, and through the latrines. All of that was 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 filmed and, and still pictures were taken of all of it. So it's just a, a I can't even describe it. You kind of you just have to see the film to really um, see the, the magnitude of the of the footage that, that was shot. Absolutely. And I've seen the film and it is beautiful. It's powerful. It's compelling. It, it's some of your best work. You and Tracy are an amazing <laughs> duo uh, who do brilliant work. And it, I think it really honors the political struggle, the moment, and the lives of, of, of James and many other people who were forced to undergo some of the most inhumane of conditions, but managed to resist in ways that left a, a clear print on history. Anyway, James, Tracy, Stanley, thank you all for joining me tonight. And everybody, make sure you check out Attica. It opens in theaters this Friday in New York and Los Angeles. And the following Saturday on Showtime.